Hey everyone, how you doing today? Topic number three with Dana from Himlane is repair coordination. We're going to go a little deeper, a little, a little more into the detail because again, repair coordination is the thing kind of out of state investors will pull their hair out from if they haven't got the team, the systems in place. And I know Himlane can help. So uh, Dana, why don't you show them what you got? Take over. Great. Thanks so much, Michael. Uh, so last time we spoke, um, I spoke a lot about setting up your team. Who are your service professionals, your handyman, your electrician, your plumber, um, or you can use our third party network and also your instructions. So know your asset, know exactly how you want it handled um, because everyone is different and every property is different. Um, so you can never have too much information in there. Everything from where the main um, water line shutoff is to appliances and what is under warranty. Um, the more information you provide, the better it's gonna be, right? But then you actually get the repair request that comes through. Um, there's ways that you can coordinate the investment, the repair request yourself, or you can have us um, go through and uh, help coordinate it. Mm. When we go through that process, um, it's all through repair coordinators who are experienced with tenants and repair requests specific from tenants. And what I mean by that is we are assuming that the tenant hasn't done any troubleshooting. So right off the bat, if there's something that comes in, like the power in the kitchen is not working, we are gonna assume they didn't check the breaker box and we're gonna go ahead and show them where the breaker panel is, if you've given those instructions or we'll tell them where we it usually is in a household um, to make sure that they can get that. And we'll walk them through, here I am as a coordinator, just saying, hey, did you check the GFIs, the electrical outlets, um, middle button, reset it, the breaker panel box. So our team as the repair coordinators will go ahead and respond to the tenants with this. I just wanna bring something up here. This the, These little things, uh, setting these things up early is going to do a couple of things. First, you're probably going to cut your um, site visits, right? Those fees, $75 or whatever it is from the plumber, the electrician, whoever, probably in half. Yeah. Tenants, how should I say this? Um, they're used to somebody coming in and doing the repairs, right? They don't have the liability for it. So when something breaks or is not working as, as it did yesterday, they pick up the phone and call. They don't troubleshoot. So if you can walk somebody through kind of a, at least an ABC checklist, you're going to cut down on, on several service calls. And again, service calls are money. Service calls will hurt cash flow. You know, if you can do it this way, this, this will be helpful. So this is nice. Exactly. And with that, you know, it gets to more complex cases, light bulbs. I've got one right um, behind me here are a great example where if it's a 10 foot ceiling, it might be your decision to go ahead and replace that light bulb versus if it is um, just a standard light bulb like this where a tenant could replace it. Um, so there's a lot of factors that go into what would be tenant's responsibility and what isn't. Um, either way, the tenants always have our um, number with a repair coordinator's name there. So they can call us at any time. We, are, we love troubleshooting and talking to them on the phone and helping them out um, through those things. There's also things you might know about your asset that you want to let us know about how to handle it of, okay, great, um, send out so-and-so um, mm -hmm. beforehand before you send out an electrician or whatever it may be. So you can go ahead and put comments in here for us to help us better understand what you're looking to do. Um, in all the cases, we understand if it's gonna be an emergency um, where it needs a four hour turnaround time, or if this is something standard where within 24 hours we'll go out and we'll go ahead and assign. Assuming that um, there has been troubleshooting um, and we've realized we actually do need someone on site. In this case, you'd also um, check with the city electrical, make sure they pay their bills. Believe it or not, sometimes when utilities are turned off, there's something with bills. Mm. Um, there's all sorts of things that can happen. Um, but anyways, we go ahead and assign out the work order based on um, preferences that we have in the system. You will have thresholds. And what I mean by that is it will never go over your threshold. If you have a threshold of $150, if it's $151, we are calling you to make sure we have approval before moving forward. We'll also go ahead and put the pricing estimate. Sometimes this is just a service call rate that we know up front. If we can get more details, we definitely will um, with what the instructions are. Any photos or documents are also shared with the service professional. If it's your own, um, like if Frank Electrician is Michael's um, service professional, that's his electrician, 
he doesn't have to log into our system. If you've ever worked with handymen, they like text messages and they do not want to use an app. They don't want to download an app and they also do not want a password. Um, mm -hmm. So this page is as I'm viewing it as the owner, but it is um, also viewable. There's a token up here so that Frank can just click on the link associated with the text message and he can see all of this information as well. Nice. He can see the tenant's scheduling contact information. He can see our number who's coordinating it. He can see the schedule date. He can even update this stuff and he can also update you and update us. It is mobile friendly in that case. So if I go like this, you'll see it's all mobile friendly. He can go through and put updates and anything like that in here. But the benefit of that is that um, we can work with any service professionals, including your own and those within our network. It's very easy and simple for them. Um, with this, the pricing estimate, none of this stuff is shared with the tenants. That's only between us. We're doing the approvals and then everything is 100% transparent to you. So you can see our conversations with the electrician. You can also see our conversations with the tenants. So you can see when we had calls, what those calls were, um, everything's recorded for quality assurance. Um, and then there's some things that will always be specific either to the property or in this case to COVID. Um, you know, we ask everyone to wear masks and stay socially distanced. This was something that came up a lot more right at the beginning. Now I think people are just accustomed to that, but we'll go through and um, do all of that. Once the work is done, we do confirm with the tenant it has been done. And then the invoices will be uploaded here. So you have the invoice from Frank's electrician. Um, we do not um, upcharge, upcharge. So we don't charge 5%, 10% on any invoices. The invoice you actually see on here is the actual professionals invoice and then we pay it on behalf of you um, routing it directly from um, your bank account to them and so you don't have to do anything you can have a bank account or a credit card set up on file and it will route directly to them from there so we'll handle all of that you'll know how much it costs based on the pricing estimate and stuff in advance and you'll know it will never go over your threshold um, so that's a little bit about like at a high level how the repair coordination works I like that because when I when I hear you walk through this, I, I kind of break it down in, in with my experience, right? Step one, we've already talked about you're you're greatly reducing the need for a service call by coaching up the tenant. Hey, did you check this? Did you check that? Then you're going through and you're you're controlling risk because you're having approved vendors, either yours or mine in this mm -hmm. example. And then lastly, it's communication. You're communicating back with the tenant, how do we do? Communicating back with me, cost. This is this is why this makes a lot of sense uh, for repair coordination. That's 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 pretty nicely done. Nice work. One thing I'll say about communication with tenants: um, sometimes we'll have um, real estate investors who say only use this list of service professionals. Do not go outside of this list. Mm. And um, we will call them, and it's two a.m. in the morning, and the heat's not working. There's some sort of emergency extreme example, but um, giving you an extreme uh, to, to show you the extent of it. Mm -hmm. We will call those service professionals, right? Every hour until we hear from them. We're also calling the owner to say, hey, can we get authorization to get someone else out there? But more important, the most important person to call is the tenant. Yeah. We're not saying, oh, I cannot believe this. You know, your management um, has not, you know, whatever LLC it's under has not given us the right people. But it's saying, just as a heads up, we've called the service professionals um, who we have assigned for this property, who we're confident who can help. Um, they are equipped for emergency hours because we ask for emergency after hours um, contractors if it's your own. Mm. And we're calling them and we're going to give you an update in an hour. Great, we called them again. And I think that is really huge for tenants. Now, of course, we'll also get them electric heaters and whatever we can do in the meantime to help mitigate it. But I think one of the biggest things to your point is communication. They just want that call. They just want someone to know that this is a priority and it is for us, right? We're tracking it. We're getting notices on our back end of boom, this is important. It needs an update every hour. And that makes all the difference for tenants, just that communication of where are we, what are the next steps, and when am I expected to hear back from you? And it's that project management 101 and communications um, that really, I think, has differentiated um, us from others of just making sure they have that communication. Wow, that's awesome. Um, anything else you want to show us here? Or do you want to go back to just you and I talking? 
Uh, we can go back to us talking. Cool. I think you have to do that. Oh, sorry. There we go. <laughs> there you go. So I just want to tell folks, that, you know, if you're thinking about being a new landlord, you know, you're out there, you know, you watch video number two or video number one, and you want to take a trial. Hemlane has a, it's a 30 day trial. Is that correct? Yep, 30 yep. days. 30 day trial on there, give it a shot, play with it, get comfortable. And again, if you're going to give this a go, uh, they have given you a discount. Uh, it is Zuber is the coupon code or discount code. And it's a whopping 20%. So do yourself a favor. If you're going to sign up, might as well save a little money that first year. Any closing thoughts, Dana? I think that's it for now. I look forward to uh, the next one. You got it. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. Thanks you too. All Bye. Right. Bye.